Hello everyone, welcome back to Techno Chachi. This is where we speak about tech and the church. Remember that awesome, awesome slogan that I keep repeating that I know now you're feeling bored of. <laughs> you're almost telling me you are boring. Boring us with this, you're boring us with this issue of talking about tech and church. But anyway, I will keep doing it till you fall in love. You grow in love with it. Sometimes we have to grow in love. <laughs> That's how sometimes life happens. You just grow in love. All right? Enough, enough said about love. Uh, before I move on to the topic of today, uh, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm at 100 subscribers. I'm at 100 subscribers. I'm at 100 subscribers. Someday I'll be at 100,000 subscribers. But for now, let's keep it at 100 subscribers. But let's grow it pole pole, kidogo kidogo, small, small, till we get to 100,000 subscribers. You are amazing, you are amazing. It is because of you that I'm at 100 subscribers. This is powered by you. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of changing my slogan from just saying Techno Chachi, where we speak about the church and the tech, to Techno Chachi, where we speak about the church and the tech. And it is powered by you. Before we get into the topic, please remember to subscribe. Um, remember to like the content. Remember to drop a comment. And above all, share, 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 share. Share this with your media teams. Share this with your grandfather. Share this with your grandmother. Anyone whom you think deserves to get a hold of this video. Okay? Um, and uh, don't forget to put on the notification bell. Because that is what will notify you that I have a new video. Awesome? Cool! Um, as I was preparing uh, for this topic today, I was reminded of this scene in Lion King. Not the recent Lion King. Forget the recent one. Forget the photorealistic uh, injustice that was done by Disney to the Lion King. I was thinking about the original Lion King when we were still children. We loved that Lion King. There's this scene where um, these hyenas are complaining how the lions have, have, have reduced them to, to the bottom of the food chain and they want to be the top, at the top of the food, food chain. They're saying if it were not for the lions, the, and, uh, they would be the, on top of the food chain. And then, you remember? Scar sh shows up and uh, one of the hyenas goes like, oh, I thought it was some somebody important. She's just Scar. Then the other one says, uh, someone important like Mufasa. And then one of them says, now that's power. Then the other one says, do it again, do it again. Mufasa. I shudder with fear. Shudder with fear. One of, our, one of my favorite animation scenes. That, that scene is so amazing. But it is because they mentioned power. I think it's the reason why I keep getting back, going back to that part. So today, we, as I had promised, we are talking about how physics affects audiovisual. You get? So you love physics. You can see it in your face. It's written all over your face. You love physics. And because of that, we will do physics today. No running away. Don't run away. Stick to the channel. Stick to the channel. Okay? Now, the first way that physics uh, affects um, audiovisual is through power. Okay? For us to get to power, we need to understand something called the Ohm's law. The Ohm's law states that voltage is directly proportional to current as long as the physical, phys physical conditions and temperature is constant or are con constant. Um, in other words, what, it, what he's saying is that if, as long as resistance is constant, yeah, when you increase the voltage, you increase what? Current. And the formula for getting, uh, formula for, for, for Ohm's law is V is equal to IR, where V stands for voltage, I stands for current, and R stands for resistance. The, the easiest way of understanding uh, Ohm's law is through is water through a pipe with water being the current, the pressure of the water being voltage, size of the pipe being resistance. As long as the size of the pipe remains constant, you, if, you increase, if you increase the pressure, you increase the, the flow of water. Okay? So how is this related to power? We know that power is the rate of energy conversion. And how do we um, convert, uh, calculate energy conversion is if we have voltage and current. Having, knowing these two um, variables will help us to calculate power. How? Uh, power is simply voltage times current. 
okay? So voltage time cur times current is equal to watts. So if you see watts on, on your appliance, or if you see voltage amp amperes, it is the same thing, okay? And you ask, how is, that, how is that relevant to me? How is that relevant to me? Maybe you have a generator at your premise, and you're trying to calculate if the generator will be enough. You must know power. You must be able to calculate power so that you, you are able to calculate the sum total of power of your appliances and uh, the rate power rating for your generator so that you don't overwork gen your generator. Is that okay? That is okay. So that, those are some of the ways you can apply this uh, Ohm's law and calculation of power. Um, and you can even take it further and check out the Kashif's law. Kashif's has, has two laws, I think. The first law is the Kashif's first law, which is the law of current. And the other one, you, those ones you have to, those ones are further studies. Do further studies. Is that okay? The second way that physics affects audiovisual is some, through something we call the Doppler's effect. All right? Um, simply put, the Doppler's effect in, simple, in, in, in physics, it is defined as the increase or decrease in the frequency of sound, light, or other waves as the source and the observer move towards or away from each other. A simple explanation of this is this. You were walking on the road and an ambulance was approaching. As the ambulance was approaching, you tend to hear as if the intensity uh, of that sound is increasing. It's, it's like music increasing tempo as it, as it comes closer to you. And then the moment the ambulance passes you, you hear like the tempo is dropping and it's dragging and, until, until the ambulance disappears. Okay, so that's basically that's what the Doppler's effect is. So how is it relevant to audiovisual? There's, uh, let's say for example, you're editing audio for film. And uh, there's this part where a plane is supposed to pass over you or a vehicle is supposed to pass. You see, it's very hard to re record that audio with that effect. So we'd use something called Doppler's effect that most production, uh, audio production software have. You apply that to your audio and you get that kind of effect as if a bus was passing as it approaches, um, the intensity of the audio becomes faster and as it goes, becomes slower. Those are the areas. Uh, the other one I think is, is, is the, the key. Um, the other place it is applicable uh, is in the pitch bend. Yeah. Um, you see on, on your keyboard, there's that card button called the pitch bend. That is another way of applying the Doppler's effect. All right? Um, the third one, which is also related to audio, is the inverse square law. <laughs> I know. I know what you're thinking now. You're saying, oh, this guy has spoken about you've spoken about the Doppler's effect. Now, how, what, what's the difference between the Doppler's effect and the inverse square law? The, uh, the inverse square law is a law, first of all. The Doppler's effect is a defect. <laughs> the second distinction is that the Doppler's effect affects the pitch majorly of the audio, but uh, inverse square law affects the loudness of the audio. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? So, the inverse square law states that in a free field, the intensity of sound drops by six decibels for each uh, doubling of distance from the source. So, uh, if you don't understand what I said, simply know that if you are standing one meter away from a sound source, let's say you are getting 40 decibels of sound. If you move, if you double the distance, let's say now you move two meters away, you are expected to lose six decibels of sound in general terms. I know in na naturally things are not perfect, but that's the general rule. So if you double again the distance, let's say you now move from two meters to four meters, you lose another six decibels. That is how simple that thing is. Now you're asking yourself, oh, how are we able to apply this in our day to day? get application in audiovisual first of all mic placement just know that the closer your mic is to or rather your mic is to the source it is the better quality sound you will get from the the source the other area is that speaker placement you just know that people who are further from the speaker tend to hear 
less compared to people who are nearer to the speaker. So that as you are setting up your sound, you don't end up blowing the ears of those that are in front, but straining the ears of those, those that are behind. They are trying to, to listen. So what do you do? do you, because of the, understanding the inverse square law, you are able to understand how to delay your speakers. So how do you calculate the inverse square law? Inverse square law, the formula is very basic. You need to understand uh, two things. First, power. Get Understand why we needed to know how to calculate power. It is also applicable here. Power, and also you need to understand how to get the, how to get the area, how to calculate the area of a sphere. You remember in, in high school we were told the area of a circle is pi r squared, and the area of, of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. You understand that? So when you get the area of the, of the sphere, the in I, which is the intensity, uh, I stands for intensity, intensity of sound, P stands for, for power of the source, and R stands for the distance between the source and who? The point of interest or the, the place where you, you want someone to stand. So when you get that, and pi, you know pi. Pi is a constant. You know pi. It does not change. It's pi, the same pi you learned in primary, you learned in high school, and now you're learning in, in your career. <laughs> okay? It's the same pi. So the, the, the formula is uh, I, which is intensity, can, uh, which is the measure of um, uh, how, how intense that, uh, the loudness of that sound, how do we get it, is power over 4 pi r squared. We, in, in other words, power of the sound over the area of, a, of the sphere. You remember the, what r stood for? r stood for the distance from the source to the point of interest. Number four, the fourth way how physics um, affects audiovisual is through resonance. Uh, if you did music in primary or anywhere, you will understand what resonance is in a basic. It's just the way objects uh, respond to, to a force that forces them to vibrate in, a, in, in their natural frequency, okay? Um, resonance is a phenomenon which an acoustic system am amplifies sound wave whose frequency matches one of its own natural frequencies of vibration. So what they simply mean, what they simply mean is that uh, every matter, every, every piece of matter has a natural frequency or natural frequencies that it vibrates in. It, that includes the planets, includes you and I, includes the wood that you maybe are sitting on, includes glass. It is very important to understand that each, every object, every object has a natural frequency in which they vibrate in. All right? So how does reson resonance affect these things? Resonance is simply when a force, a force from an external force forces this object to vibrate in one of its natural frequencies. For example, if I pluck a string of a guitar, it forces the box in that guitar to vibrate at certain frequency uh, so that we are now able to hear the sound of that guitar. That is how guitars work. Um, even the, 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 the piano, that is how a piano works. Um, what other instrument? Even a horn, a sax, that is how these things work. Even your vocal cords, that is how your vocal cords work. Uh, whether it is a glass you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are you are trying to, to make to vibrate, that is how sound is produced. That is the basic way how sound is produced. Okay? Um, so you're asking yourself, how is this relevant to us? Uh, usually when they are, they, they are, they are um, manufacturing instruments, they really test how different materials, different objects respond to sound to resonance, how they resonate to different sources of, 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 of forces. You get, for example, when they're manufacturing a guitar, they test different types of wood to, and how it responds to how uh, the string will vibrate, cause it to vibrate, all right? Um, the other way is so that you are able to protect your glasses. <laughs> yeah, you've seen in movies where someone sings at a very high pitch, 
and uh, glasses are breaking. Yeah, in real life, it can happen. It's not just something in the movies. In real life, it can happen. Please, 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 don't break mama's glasses. Okay? You, when, when your opera guy is singing, you need to understand that if they make uh, the glasses vibrate at a certain frequency, the glasses can break. It, it happens in, in, in events. So don't be a victim. The fifth way that uh, physics affects audiovisual is through something we call super, superposition and interference in waves. Okay? Uh, as you, from your basic physics in high school, you understand that waves have four properties. One is the wavelength, the amplitude, uh, the frequency, and, and what? The period. Okay? I won't get into the definition of all that, but understand that in, in, in superposition, uh, two identical waves that arrive at the same point exactly in phase, the crests of these two waves are precisely aligned and are, and that are as are the troughs. This superposition produces what we call pure constructive interf interface. Okay? In other words, what they are saying is that if we have two similar waves, similar in amplitude, similar in wavelength, similar in wave periods, similar in uh, phase, wave phase, uh, uh, in frequency rather, not, not wave phase. Uh, when these frequencies are traveling towards the same direction, they merge to, co to become one big wave. In other words, these two waves become the wave, if it is sound wave, the sound becomes louder. Okay? Now, the inverse is true. Uh, two identical waves that arrive exactly out of phase, that is, precisely aligned crests to trough, producing the pure, dis produce pure, destructive inter in inter interference, not interface, interference. Because the disturbance are in the opposite direction for, for, for this position, the resulting ampli amplitude is zero uh, for pure destructive interface. The phase completely cancel each other. In simple terms, if, two of, if one wave, if, if, if we have waves of similar um, uh, frequency, uh, similar amplitudes, uh, but are out of phase, these waves tend to cancel each other. In general, the wave amplitude becomes zero. Why is this important? In your audio signals, there's something we call balanced signals, okay? Balanced signals is, is, a way, um, is one of the ways we use to deal with noise in audio. So that when audio is, 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 is transmitted from one point to another, it picks interferences along the way which become noise in the system. So the way they deal with this is that at the point of, of transmission, they send two waves of, of equal, 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 uh, two waves that, are, that are, are similar but are out of phase. You get? So as they travel, as they pick, uh, as they pick noise along the way, each of these will pick the same noise you get. So at the, at the point of, of reception, uh, one of the waves is, is, is changed back so that they are in phase with each other. So as they become in phase with each other, you realize that the noise that had been embedded on one of the waves becomes out of phase with the noise that was Im embedded on the other wave. And so through this, Noise is cancelled, but audio is amplified. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a formula for this. All right? So that is one of the, one of the areas where uh, superposition and interference and every other thing is applied in audiovisual. The sixth way that physics uh, affects audiovisual is through something we call signal-to-noise ratio. This is a basic thing. This is possibly one of the easiest and the simplest in this a signal to, to noise ratio of the signal uh, is, the, is the ratio of the signal power to the noise power. And it is also expressed in decibels.
simply put is that um, it is the ratio between how loud your signal will become is or, or, or will become and how loud the noise is naturally every device has some uh, some noise in it and so um, it's, it's like a natural thing because everything vibrates at, at, at one point and so do you maybe let's say for example you are recording something you realize that there's some noise so for for your audio to be quali of quality the ratio is very very important so how do you apply sing uh, signal to noise ratio how do we apply it in our day-to-day -day audiovisual uh, first of all you need to notice that when you're doing your video recordings you try to put your mic as close as possible to the subject why because the further your mic is, it means that the noise will be louder than the, 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 the uh, audio signal. So for, for you to deal with that, you try put with, with, with that in mind that you need to make this ratio um, more re as reasonable as possible. You need to do that. The seventh one, this one touches on uh, designers and and. Uh, photographers and, and, and filmmakers is the golden ratio. So what, what is the golden ratio? Let me just read so that then I explain in simple terms. The golden ratio is the number used when two quantities are divided in a way that the ratio is the same as the ratio of the sum to the larger of the two quantities. It is expressed as a rounded off figure of 1.618. Now, how do we get to 1.618? For you to understand the golden ratio, you first have to understand what we call the Fibonacci sequence. So the, what, what is the Fibonacci sequence? The Fibonacci sequence is, is, is a sequence that was made for, popular by Leonardo Fibonacci, but it is believed that it was uh, discovered by ancient Indian uh, Hindu, rather Hindu, <laughs> Hindu mathematicians and also the Greeks used it a lot in their architecture. I'll show some pictures somewhere. Um, how this ratio uh, sequence, uh, what is this sequence? Let's say, for example, you have your first digit as zero. Uh, the next digit is one, okay? Naturally, that's how it works. The next digit should be one. So um, to get the next number, you need to add these two numbers. You need to add the number you have right now and the previous number. So one plus zero is one. So to get to the next number, you add the one plus one, you get two. So to get to the next number, you add uh, one plus two is three. To get to the next, next number, you add two plus three, which is five. To get to the next number, you add two, uh, I, mean, I mean three, wait, three plus five, which is 8. To get to the next number, you add 5 plus 8, which is 13, and on. It is an infinite array of numbers. Here's the beauty of this. The beauty of this is that if you divide the sum of two numbers in that sequence, uh, two, <laughs> two, the bigger number in that addition, you get the golden ratio. Of course, from the beginning, you may not get it exactly, but the bigger the numbers, the closer you get to 1.618. Let's take, for example, 8, uh, uh, 3, plus, 2 plus, uh, 3 plus 5 is 8, right? What is the bigger number in this, in this sequence? The bigger number is 5. So 5 divided by 8, what do you get? You get 1 point, uh -huh, uh, 6. Yeah? Actually, it's 1.6 for, for that. So the bigger you get, it is a rounded off figure. So the bigger, you, uh, the bigger the numbers you deal with, the higher the numbers you go, the more and the closer you get to, to what? To, to 1.618. So uh, the golden ratio or the Fibonacci uh, number uh, is expressed as a constant phi. It is called, a, in physics, it's called a constant phi, which is 1.618. So how is this relevant to uh, 
to audiovisual. So how is this applicable in audiovisual? It is applicable in design, it is applicable in photography, it is applicable in video, uh, and a bit of archi architectural uh, design if you are into such stuff. Uh, for further study, because the golden ratio is a deep topic, is a huge topic, you need to do a proper study on, on what the golden ratio does. Okay, a, a watered down version of the golden ratio is what, what in photography or video, or video production is what we call um, the rule of thirds. Where the rule of thirds state that you, 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 you don't put your subject at the center of, of your frame, but somewhere at the, at the, at the one third of that, of that frame. So the golden ratio the rule of thirds is like a simpler, a layman's or uh, an amateur version of what the golden ratio is. Otherwise, thank you guys. It has been real for me. I'm glad I did this topic. Um, possibly there's something you didn't understand. Uh, maybe I, something I didn't, I misexplained. Let me know in the comment section. Above all, please subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. <laughs> subscribe. So that we can have more power to do these things. Okay? Don't forget to uh, put on the notification bell. Don't forget to share this video. Otherwise, from me, it's been, it's been real. This is Techno Churchy, where we discuss tech and the church. <laughs> and you are the power. All right? You'll be blessed because you came. Mm -hmm.